Hello everyone, my name is Liz Todd and I'm on Esri Story Maps team. Here are some beginner storytelling techniques that will help you get started using ArcGIS Story Maps. When starting any storytelling project, it's important to consider who your audience is, what the purpose behind your story is, and why you're making your story for your audience. Your storytelling approach will differ depending on your audience. Are they subject matter experts who just wanna get straight into the weeds of your topic? Or is this concept entirely new to them? So you'll need to ease them in with just the basics. In addition, consider how you're going to distribute your story and what action you want your readers to take after reading it. Once you've figured this out, you're ready to jump into ArcGIS Story Maps. The best place to start is esri.com slash story maps. This is a great website to bookmark and explore the resources that Esri Story Maps team has developed. These range from community stories and what we're reading to resources like practical how-to blog posts that will help you on your storytelling journey. And it's also where you can launch the story builder and start creating. The Flexible Builder puts a multitude of storytelling tools at your fingertips, but there's no need to be overwhelmed. I'll start by showing you some of the fundamental components and workflows that will make familiarizing yourself with the tool a breeze. First up is the block palette. The block palette allows you to build your story piece by piece. You have text blocks, you can have media, videos, or audio blocks. And you have immersive blocks, which are used to create an engaging experience for your reader. Once you've added a text block, you can use the rich text editor, which appears when you highlight text to change the text style, color, and add hyperlinks. Once you've added a media content, you can use the media toolbar to change the size of your media. And you can use immersive blocks like slideshow, to divert from the single column scrolling flow to create a more dynamic experience for your reader. Each block has its own unique format for how your text and media interact. And unlike media blocks, there are no sizing options. They lock into place and fill the entire browser window. You might have noticed a little gear icon floating in the toolbars for media blocks and throughout immersive blocks. This is how you access the options panel, where you can make important decisions about how your media is displayed on different screen sizes, add at asset attributions, or configure alternative text. Alternative text will appear if media can't load, and it also makes content accessible for those with assistive technologies like screen readers. Accessibility is an important aspect of any story, and we have a variety of resources on our website to help you learn the techniques for accessible storytelling. The design panel is where you can change your cover style and make adjustments to the visual language your narrative uses. Story preview lets you get an idea of how your story will configure to readers on different devices. And the more actions menu is where you can configure more granular story settings, generate a printable PDF or make a copy of your story. And then of course, there's the publish button. It's important to know about your publishing options within story maps. You can keep your story private at an organizational level or you can make your story public and you can also share your story to a group. All right, these are some of the basic storytelling techniques for getting started with ArcGIS Story Maps.